Now to the next presentation, which is from Professor Katharina Landfester from Mainz. She's a director of the Max Planck Institute there, and she's a strong uh, member of our Sonderforschungsbereich Coordinated Research Center in Mainz, also on the top, which I introduced at the beginning. Please, Katharina. Yeah, thank you very much, Rudolf, for the kind introduction. And uh, also hello to everybody here. I would like to talk about very specifically about protein nanocapsules uh, for targeting and uh, controlled release of drugs. Even so, we are not uniquely working with protein nanocapsules. But uh, of course, uh, all the speakers before have, have already talked why it's so important to get uh, to have, of course, nanocarriers. And, um, we don't want to have, of course, a systemic application with many, many side effects where the drug is everywhere in the system, but we want to have really something which is very specific where we have a targeting. And in the following, I would not only like to talk about uh, one specific drug, but also drug combinations. And how can we really get drug combinations um, uh, combination for uh, combinatory therapies into the patient. So that is what we can talk here. And uh, we have now already heard quite a bit about vaccines, that we need an antigen and adjuvant in order to have that really a vaccine. So I will not repeat that uh, again and again, because I think everybody is aware of that. So that means also uh, everybody knows how really an, a vaccination works right now so that we need really here the antigen uptake, then the antigen uh, degradation presentation via the MHC uh, um, in order to then have uh, here the cellular and humoral uh, immune response before we have then a long-term protection. Of course, what is still a problem are all the side effects, the drug protection, the targeted delivery, the specificity and the therapeutic application. So in order to solve that, I think we have all to work together in order to get that uh, problem solved. And as we have heard uh, just before in the talk, I think we need or we may need also combination of different kind of um, applications. So in our case, we want to enhance now the efficacy of the nanocarriers first of all by using directly an antigen delivery system. So we will make our um, nanocarriers out of the of albumin. So secondly, we want to use combinations of adjuvants. And th uh, third of all, we want to combine that all in one carrier. And this carrier, we want to even uh, get then into, target, uh, into the targeting area in order to really get a therapeutic uh, vaccination and, general, uh, and generate by that a novel platform for the immunomodulatory approach. So what approach do we use? So we have heard before about micelle formation, but we can also use the so-called mini emulsion process in order to get nanocapsules. These nanocapsules have really now an entire covalently bound shell around that, and we are uh, doing that by first of all having an organic phase here with a surfactant and the aqueous phase where everything is in it, what we want to encapsulate later on in the, our nanocapsules. Um, also here, the protein we want to encapsulate, for example, or the protein we need afterwards for making the shell formation. Then we make by ultrasonif uh, on ultrasonification small nano uh, droplets. These nano droplets have uh, all the same size and ver are very stable uh, throughout the time. And then we can do at the interface of the droplet and the continuous phase um, polymerization step. We make a cross-linking of, um, of the protein here in order to form here the capsules. The capsules are uniquely formed here outside. Inside we have freely, um, still free um, uh, com uh, components swimming in the water phase. Then we only need the redispersion in aqua solution. We purify afterwards in order to have water and water capsules and with a high encapsulation uh, degree of whatever we wanted to encapsulate. 
And then what we use here is really the ovalbumin as a commonly used antigen in immunology. So how do the nanocarriers look like? So first of all, again here, the interfacial polymerization, I think this doesn't work anymore, um, the interfacial polymerization with the diisocyanate, we form here really uh, protein nanocapsules, these protein nanocapsules, and that is the beauty of these systems, are per se biodegradable. They have a high uh, encapsulation efficiency uh, functional shell and uh, are very versatile because instead of using the, the ova, you could also use any other proteins you can think of. Then we have wonderful nanocapsules, and if you're not happy with the uh, um, isocyanate uh, chemistry, we can also use here by orthogonal reaction, like the click reaction, where we can uniquely click here the reagents at the interface, leaving apart all the other uh, functional um, uh, moieties around. So that means we have, that we have to use then non-toxic reagents uh, uh, for the biological system. The reaction has to be in a reasonable time scale. Um, we need, of course, uh, to have a reaction under ambient conditions as water and uh, schemoselectivity, otherwise it wouldn't work. And with this, we can then form at the interface very nice, uh, again, um, nanocapsules by having here the dipolar tetrazoline cycle addition. And these are nanocapsules are very nice because they also fluoresce uh, without having an additional fluorescent marker in there. So by this approach, by the mini emulsion approach, we have now the possibility to co-encapsulate different kinds of um, drugs uh, as well as we can put in additional reporters to that. That might be uh, not only fluorescently labeled uh, components, but also MRT agents and so on. What is now about the release? The release means that we need additionally to our material we want to um, form. We need here, in all the cases, usually um, somehow um, gates that can open. And usually we have to do that quite um, specifically, that this is only then, that the gates can only be opened upon uh, a certain approach from uh, enzymes or from redox systems. In the case of the uh, proteins, these proteins are always enzymatic, uh, enzymatic degradable, and therefore they are very nicely uh, used for our approach. So first of all, we have a nice cellular binding uh, of our uh, antigen delivery system, and what we can also see, we have a nice degradation by uh, and a nice enzymatic degradation. What we can nicely see, if you look here at 4 degrees C, where we don't have any release, and here at 37 degrees C, where we have a nice release, what you can see here with the green dots, because we have here used here uh, markers that only appears in the cellular matrix uh, if uh, there is a release. So if we just look for the kinetics, we can also put here, for example, trypsin outside. So that is really now under lab conditions. And we see how long it takes in order to degrade the nanocapsules in order to release whatever we want to uh, release outside. And that we have really an over-specific T cell uh, proliferation can be shown here. It can be shown here for the OT1 CD8 and OT2 CD4 um, cells. Also here we are using bone marrow-derived um, uh, DC cells. So that means what we have now in hand is an over nanocapsule that take can be taken up and degraded. Uh, by the uh, BMDCs in a dose and time dependent manner. They are uh, really suitable antigen sources for the BMDA um, mediated T cell proliferation, and, we can derive, and uh, they can derive peptides that are presented via the MHC1 and MHC2. But still, what we uh, just discussed before is a transport. How can we make a transport here? Do we need anything else? So if we have now our capsules um, 
our protein capsules, first of all, we only have a synthetic identity of our system. So the biological identity of the nanomaterials is always different. So we have to look now how uh, proteins are attached, and not only proteins, but all the biomolecules from the blood are attached to our nanocapsules, and uh, what changes here throughout the time, because there are uh, really many, many components in the bloodstream. So what we have seen um, a couple of years ago is that th uh, through the attachment of a Snell's polymer like polyethylene glycol, so PEG, we have uh, seen that we have a non-uptake, uh, of course, as uh, everybody knows, but this non-uptake is not only due here to the pegylation, but because we have a selectively reduced absorption of very defined proteins. In our cases, and in many other cases, we have uh, identified clustering and other apolipoproteins that are attached on our nanocapsules, and that lead to the non-uptake behavior Non that means non-specific uptake um, uh, up, uh, uh, in of the nanocarriers into the um, cells. What we can also see here, if we have now a pegylation of our over nanocapsules, we can also see here, so we have here different kinds of uh, over uh, of uh, pegylation densities, and we can also see, always see, and for different uh, kinds of serums, that from the left to the right, we always have a decrease if we, if we have more and more pegylation on top of our nanocarriers. That is important, because that means that we need a stealth, additionally a stealth effect, even so, uh, already on uh, um, protein nanocapsules, we have ver a very reduced adsorption of proteins. And we can also look uh, specifically at the protein adsorption, and here we can see here also that we have, in this case, in a small amount, the complement system, as you can see here in yellow, but apolipoproteins in red are really very prominent on top of our nanocarriers, which leads then to the stealth effect. And with this, we have then the possibility to really engineer the protein corona on our protein nanocapsules that make these nanocapsules then um, possible for targeting afterwards. But let's go now uh, quickly to the second part what kind of adjuvant can we really load into our nano uh, capsules? So, of course, we can choose. And what we did is we looked here for the endos endosomal and the um, cytoplasmic um, adjuvant uh, materials. And what we cho have chosen here is the R848 and the ML MDP and uh, L18 MDP. So we first of all, identified that to be really very, in the combination, very good um, super additive BMDC stimulation uh, systems. And then we look, what can we now, what can we really encapsulate? The L18 MDP turned out not to be really good because it has a long tail here, and that means it was far too hydrophobic or even amphiphilic, so it turned out to be in the um, nanocapsule afterwards. So therefore, we decided not to take this, but to take the MDP without the uh, lipophilic tail. And then we could combine now. In all the cases, we could use the over nanocapsules, the over nanocapsules with the MDP, with uh, the R848 and the MDP and the R848 together. We had a very a good encapsulation efficiency for all the cases of uh, about 80% and could now see that the stimulation in the, for the uh, BMDC uh, worked very nicely in the combination when we have really the MDP and R848 together with the over nanocapsule. So we had the three components together, and uh, we could see here that uh, also all the factors here, the L1 uh, better, the L6, um, TNF-alpha, and L12 uh, 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 was increased a lot. So with this, we could then also see that we really had an over-specific T-cell proliferation uh, and the T-cell cytokines, um, and we have here, uh, for example, here the uh, interferon uh, gamma scene very much uh, increased. 
So as a conclusion, we could show that we really can have a very good uh, core encapsulation of many components. I've shown you the core encapsulation of two components inside the over nanocapsules that we have the release because we use the um, protein as a shell material, the release gates where the protein themselves. And then we had here the over MDP R R848 nanocapsule which stimulate the BMDC in a super additive manner, combined effective the adjuvant uh, combination and the anti antigen source in one fundamental uh, functional nanocarrier and induce here BMDC mediated over specific uh, directed T cell differentiation. With this, I think and I hope that I could show that we have um, protein nanocarriers obtained by the inverse minimalism that can be successfully used for vaccination. I would like to thank the entire group and all the collaborators and you for your kind attention. Thank you very much. <laughs> Katharina, many thanks for your for this nice presentation. I think due to time constraints, we have time for one question. Yeah, um, uh, I, I couldn't get, uh, why do you need to pigulate uh, protein capsules? Because in principle, you could choose proteins which would be more, uh, how to say, have, uh, let's say, make your particles more biocompatible and uh, let's say steel. No, so, so biocompatibility is not the issue. But so we want to, uh, we, uh, so in order, if you want to target afterwards, you need to suppress the non-specific cell uptake. And in the case of the pure protein nanocapsules, you still have a t uh, certain uptake, which is not huge, but you still have a certain uptake in, in order to decrease the non-specific uptake. We yeah, need but to you could to choose probably some proteins would have less specific, uh, less non-specific interaction than the others. Yeah, right? so but then, so what, but, but what we wanted to have here that we have the antigen uh, uh, adjuvant uh, system. Yeah, so, so okay. I think we can also use, it was too quick now, we can also use polyphosphor esters to make it uh, stealth nanocarriers out of it, so that is then more um, to the nature, if you want. So it's not that we uniquely need or, or definitely need the pegulation, but we need so in order to have really specific uh, specificity okay. afterwards. Mm -hmm.